All right, guys. Well, here we are. It is like three in the morning now. Now, listen, I definitely was trying to do a video earlier in the, in the evening. And there's periods where I don't like doing videos. Like, I don't want to do them. It's not how I feel tonight. I'm in the mood. I enjoy them. Like, when I'm on, I fucking enjoy it. I like what I do. But when I have to force it, I don't like it. That's when I get weird. That's when I start, like, going on rants. I'm like, oh, all prostitutes should live in Rome. I don't think I've ever said anything like that. But you know what I'm saying. Go off on, like, random shit. Tonight, the reason that I have not done a video yet, and it's embarrassing to admit this, but I have had straight-up barbaric gas. I ate these this protein vegan fucking cookie that I got at 7-Eleven, and I think that it, like, has like, a lot of fiber in it, and, like, my junky-ass stomach, like, it, I'm, like, allergic to f anything that's, like, condensed fiber like that. I'm like, oh, no, we're, oh, I feel like I'm kicking or something. So, anyway, so, like, earlier I was watching a movie with Karina, we were about to fuck, she was in some sexy little nightgown, and the farts that I was laying down were like straight up 90s hip hop beats. It had like, it was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. It just sounded like immature. You know what I mean? It sounded like I was like some immature guy doing farting noises, but it was real and it was coming out of my asshole. And this is the thing, they stunk. It smelled like, I don't even know what that smell. It smelled like fucking sulfur. Yeah. Sulfur farts. Right on. Sulfur humor, super funny. So, you know, I know that I'm essentially an open book, and I don't that I don't care about coming on here and making a fool out of myself. But farting, for some reason, I'm self conscious about in the public eye. When it's just Karina and I, I don't give a fuck. I fart, I shit, I take shit out of my ass, fling it at walls, write my I'm like Ryan was here. I don't care. They have a very, very um, risque <laughs> relationship. Perverted. We were talking about that today. Oh, fuck. I have to fart right now. Okay. I don't want you guys to, like, <clears throat> make fun. I mean, it is what it is. Everybody fart. If you could smell it, it'd be worse. Oh, my God. <sighs> Our landlord's dog just, like, keeled over and died. It's really bad. It's, like, the farts that I have right now, like, they're gnarly. They're swampish. <sighs> Whoa, man. That's heavy duty farting right there. All right. Let's try to, let's try to be mature about it. Let's try to get into the story. I'm just letting you know the gas that I have right now is uncontrollable. I am not the kind of guy that's going to hold a fart and just to be polite, I give no fucks. Zero fucks given. It's like what's coming out of my asshole. There's like vapor steam coming out of my butthole right now. All right, let's get into the story though. Let's have a better month, guys. If I seriously, I appreciate those of you that that believe in me and that are still with me. I truly believe that. And now it's time for me to perform. Crack the neck, get into it, buddy. You got this. So where we left off last, and this is an interesting story. And what's interesting about this story is that Karina did not want me. To ever talk about this particular um, series of events that had happened. This is from, if we're going off YouTube series, what series was Karina? Uh, I think she was in the Pimping and Pandering series because this is all the stuff that had happened in the wake of that. Now, if you remember this, and, and this story is a bit complicated. That's why last time when I was telling it, I kind of had to go into a backstory about Jeff's ex-girlfriend, Callan, who happened to be the fucking supervisor at Trader Joe's that Karina was trying to boost wild turkey from. Very, very strange coincidence. 
But this is something, let's go into something even beyond that. It's just so you know, because this is a complicated story. And it's kind of strange going into these nonlinear uh, storylines without being able to contextualize shit. God, I make my, sound, my shit sound like so proper. Well, you know, when we contextualize the butt fucking Congo. Oh, God, I got to fart again. Oh, my God. So embarrassing. I'm, I don't even care. You know what? I'm fucking liberated, baby. Let's go. So, so um, when I had relapsed on heroin, don't forget this. At the time, I was on federal probation for selling heroin in 2008 is when I got busted. This is in 2017. I'm still on federal probation. And before I had uh, gotten transferred to Santa Barbara, before that, I lived in LA when I lived with my ex-wife. You are such a drug addict. When I lived with her, I had a probation officer named Ben Ventura. Ben Ventura looked like Danny DeVito, but tall. Imagine Danny DeVito, but like 6'2". I was like, has anyone ever told you you look like a 6'2 version of Danny DeVito? He's like, shut up. I hear that shit all the time and it's not fucking funny. I'm like, all right. I'm not even joking. I like seriously would say that to him. Ben Ventura hated me. He fuck. he hated me. He hated me because he knew that I was a junkie. He knew it. I mean, I looked so bad. With the acne, with like the icicle fucking pus that would like spew out of my face. I think he hated the fact that my wife at the time looked like a fucking porn star. And she dressed like one. And he hated that. He hated that. Because he looked at me and I was so ugly. I was this hideous fucking, you know, curb creature. I'd like come in, I stunk. And you'd see me with her and she looked relatively normal. Now, she was very far from that. She was one of the most mentally unstable women I've ever known in my life. But from an outside perspective, he he would see me. I was driving an X5 BMW, nice car, black on black X5 SUV, black leather interior. It looked like a really nice car. And then I had this wife that had big fake tits. And I think he just was like... You know, I don't know what his home life looked like, but he seemed like the kind of guy that probably, like, would, you know, I don't know, call sex hotlines and be like, yeah, let's just pretend that, it, that I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Twins, that my brother is Danny DeVito, but I'm not him, let's fuck. Stuff like that. Ventura, that was the probation officer... Ben Ventura was the guy that I had gotten a dirty for, for cocaine a couple times. Now, that's up for discussion. But personally, I think that my ex-wife was putting it in my food. She was either putting it in my food. I don't know what she was doing, but I think she was intentionally getting me dirty cocaine tests. He knew that I was using. And I'd gotten a dirty for opiate. And so... He was one of those guys, and I've run into this when I got busted for the half pound of heroin by the feds. The cops were happy when they found it. They're like, what's this? This looks like a prison term, my dude. And I'm just like, fuck. You could, there's almost this like kind of disgusting glee when they bust you. And my probation officer was one of those guys that was very, very, very eager to put me back in prison. I could tell. So when I had gotten a dirty for um, an opiate test, I remember I went to the doctor. I cut my foot open. Shoe was full of blood. I had to get on my knees and beg the doctor to prescribe me Vicodin. And then I had a script, and then he couldn't do anything about it. And he knew, he fucking knew that I was strung out. There's no way that I wasn't strung out. I, like, had, like, VCRs that I was going to pawn. I'd be, like, in the probation waiting room, like, holding, like, fucking items like that. Like, no, I'm not using. There's, like, a cord fucking trailing me. 
then I, when I went to prison for the second time, when I went to Lompoc, when I met Big Meech, I got in trouble. I got in trouble there, and I also got a dirty drug test, and they were aware of that. So you got to understand, when I got out of prison the second time, they transferred my case down to Santa Barbara. But they don't have a federal probation office in Santa Barbara, so they actually did it in a town called Ventura, which is about 30 minutes south of Santa Barbara. And they had these files on me that basically said that I was some con artist, junkie, piece of shit scumbag with acne. It was like in parentheses, he has acne too, be careful. Hep C acne. So the first time that I ever met with probation, because when you get out of prison, you have like, I think 72 hours. No, you have like 48 hours to report. They like want you to fuck up. They're like, yeah, you have like a couple days. I mean, you could get high if you wanted to, but we'll probably test you. But you know, just do what you got to do. And then boom, you get it dirty and they send you right back. So the first time that I ever met up with my probation officer, I had not been assigned one yet. So I met with this guy named Brandon Schneider, who was the head of probation in Ventura for federal probation. This guy, freckly face, kind of kid that looked like he got hell, you know, got his face put in a toilet bowl and butt fucked at, you know, at public school or whatever. You could just tell that he'd been picked on, right? And I remember the first time that I met with the guy, he was staring, like, he calls me into his office and he's staring at me. Just like that. And so I stared back. I mean, what the fuck? What am I going to do? I'm not a bitch. I'm like, yeah, I can stare. And then, like, I had to bite my nail. I don't know. I got nervous. I was like, it's like, what? He's like, Mr. Leone, I've been going over your files here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to theorize that you're a problem maker. Is that accurate? I was like, no, I'm just on federal probation because I, I stay out of trouble. Spot on. Great detective work, Mr. Schneider. Whatever the f Schneider. Brandon Schneider. He's like, I don't like problem makers. I don't like problem makers in my office. And he's like, can we do things a little bit different here in the Ventura office than they did in the L.A. office? Because in L.A. they gave you what? Multiple, what does it say here? Five, six, seven chances before they sent you back to prison? We're not going to do that. You're on a tight leash, Mr. Leone. I'm like, it's Leone. He's like, sorry. Mr. Leone. One screw up, one screw up, and I'm sending you back to the can. I was like, who talks like that? I felt like I was in a fucking episode of Miami Vice or something. I was like, okay, I don't want to go back to the can, bro. Whatever, right? So that was my first interaction with him. That was in March of 2017. Shortly thereafter, like he told, he's like, because he asked me what I, he's like, what do you do for a living? I was like, I'm a, I'm a writer. <sighs> My balls, you're a writer. I said, yeah, I am. I have a book out and I'm pursuing it and I might be getting a film deal and yeah. And he's like, I don't care. You're going to get a nine to five job. You're going to take a fucking bus to work if you have to. You're going to live with your mother and father. You're not going to have any fucking friends. You're not going to get any fucking pussy. I'm not joking. He's telling me shit like this, right? I don't know if he said the pussy thing, but basically told me that I was going to have no life. And I was like, oh, sh of course I'm a bitch. Keep, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep telling me. All right. Cool. Shortly after that point. I get a phone call from this guy named Josh, um, oh man, what was his last name? I forget what the guy's last name was, but my probation officer ended up being this guy named Josh. Josh was probably seven years younger than me. Young, tall, goofy bastard, right? 
to total idiot, total moron. And you could tell that he was completely pussy whipped by Brandon Schneider or whatever. So he'd try to act tough with me, but he was like one of those guys that just seemed like such a bitch that I just couldn't take him seriously. I mean, it's not my fault. And I got over on this guy all the time. Supposed to do community service. He'd be like, Mr. Leone, did you do, um, hey, bud, did you do your community service? And I'm like, no. He's like, why not? I was like, I don't know. You know, I'm tired. I have hepatitis C. It's life-threatening. And if you push me too far, I'm not going to say that I'm going to hold your office accountable. But I'm just saying that there's people in my family that are talking that way. Yeah, I got to go. All right. I'd say shit like that to him. I played this game with him where I would say things that were so fucking outlandish that I think that it confused him. Time goes on. And if you remember what had happened and I got arrested for the pimping and pandering thing, I had to call and tell Josh the truth. Tell him that I'd been arrested for the pimping and pandering thing. I was crying on the phone. I thought I was going back to jail for sure. Especially after Brandon Schneider was like, you did one thing, you fart and wrong one time in one direction and I'll blow your fucking house down. He didn't talk like that, but in my mind, that's how he talked. But no, they said that they would let me resolve it in the state. Okay, so right before this period, this is why I'm explaining this. Right before this time period, I end up relapsing with Connor when I go work at that telemarketing place. Karina just lost her job. I end up going in for a drug test. I don't remember how it went down exactly, but somehow I got a dirty test for opiates for the one time that I used. And of course I manipulated my way out of it. I was like, Josh, baby, sugar, come on. I had to go to the hospital and they gave me the lauded. There's nothing I can fucking do about it. And then I actually went to the hospital, if you guys can remember, and I pretended like I had a kidney stone. I was screaming in agony and I actually got a shot and I was able to get out of it that way. But the point is, is they knew that I got over on them, especially Brandon Shane. Josh was an idiot. That guy was incapable of thinking by himself, but Brandon was like puppeteering him, right? So when it gets time for me to go to rehab, and I didn't bring this up the last time we were talking about this story, but it's very important that you understand this because this is fucked up. And it's also an important part of the story that I'm telling you tonight. When I got really fucked up, I only relapsed for a week, but any heroin addict, any addict of any kind, alcoholic, doesn't matter what your drug of choice is. You know that things can get pretty bad, even in a week. One week of using for me, I was in really bad shape again. This is after they had given me a drug test. I'd come up dirty, and I had found a way to finagle my way out of it. When I needed to go to detox, after I had talked to Karina's dad, and he was willing to pay her part of it, I talked to my parents. They were willing to pay their part of it. I actually went to the probation department. And I had a meeting with Josh and Brandon Schneider. And I told them that I wanted to go to detox. Now, I remember this shit like it was yesterday. I'm sitting at this big table. It's like the kind of table you'd see in movies where like they're doing corporate meetings. You know, when there's like all these people from a corporation sitting at a long table there's like the roll-up chairs that go up to the table and everybody's sitting there talking about the company or whatever. It was that kind of setup, but it was just me, Brandon, and Josh. Brandon is like squeezing the stress ball. He is like one of these stress balls and he's talking to me. And I'm telling them that I want to go to detox. I go, guys, I need to go to detox. Brandon smiles at me because it's essentially checkmate for him. 
And I had learned the lesson the hard way. When I got my DUI and I had told my first uh, probation officer, Ben Ventura, that I'd gotten arrested for a DUI, that's why I got the violation, because I had admitted it to him. So I learned right there and then never admit shit to the feds because they use it against you. And that's ultimately what got me violated for the DUI. So I told Brad, I said, look, guys, I'm just going to be completely honest with you, kind of. I got to go to detox. Brandon sitting there with the stress ball and he goes, why do you have to go to detox? Is it because you've been using mind altering substances? I said, no, Brandon. It's not. I want to go to detox because I just want to detox. She's like, that doesn't even make sense. He's like almost breaking the stress ball at this point. So I had to come up with an intricate lie on the spot. Sometimes I'm good at it. Sometimes I'm not. This particular time, I don't know what the fuck came out of me, but it sounded believable. I said, look, this is the thing, guys. I'm just, I'm, I remember watching him with the stress ball. It's making me like nervous. You know, sometimes when you're with somebody and they start pacing and it just starts making you nervous because you're like, God damn, dude, just sit down. That's how the stress ball felt. And I said, this is the thing, gentlemen. I have hepatitis C, as you know. And I'm also on Suboxin, as you know. And I, they both look at each other. Uh-huh. And I was like, now... I need to get treated for my hepatitis C. My liver is at a dangerously high viral load right now. I could die any time. How, how are you going to sleep at night with that, Josh? Huh? Huh, Brandon? What are you going to do? Get two stress balls so you can play with balls, you bitch? No, I didn't say that. That's what I should have said. But I said, but I basically explained to them that I had to get hepatitis C treatment and that I wasn't allowed to be on Suboxone while I was getting treatment for hepatitis C and that I needed to go to detox so that I could safely get off my prescribed medication of Suboxone. This is what I remember like it was yesterday. He's squeezing the stress ball and he looks at me and he goes, Leone, that's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard. You need detox because you're fucked up on drugs and you just won't admit it to us. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you need detox, then you're going to go to one of our detox facilities and you're going to go for a minimum of 18 months. I was like, oh, <laughs> well, I guess I don't need detox. And he smiles. I guess not. Motherfucker knew he had me. Think about this for a second. Think about how fucked up this is. I needed help. I needed detox. I had only been on heroin for a week. I'm drinking every day at that point. I was shit-faced when I was in that office watching Brandon play with his little balls. And they wouldn't let me go to detox. You know, they were basically saying that if I admitted that I was on drugs, that they were going to put me in a lockdown detox facility for 18 months and that would have been worse if i had gone to prison itself now this is a very um misunderstood part of being on probation or parole that i think is important for people to understand you know if, if you have no experience with this then i understand it's foreign to you but probation or parole will always say that they'll give you a chance and they'll send you to treatment but the treatment that they're talking about is like Salvation Army, like straight up like fucking 1930s chain gang, like slave fucking rehab where you have to like dig holes and like fill in concrete all day. You're basically doing slave labor. You get paid no money and you're locked down for 18 months. In a lot of ways, it's worse than prison. So they'll say that they want to help you. But these kind of programs are absolutely are out of control, right? They're 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 fucked up. 18 months and also one of the things because you know, there were times where I had been fucked up like when I was married and I wanted to get treatment and I considered maybe going to some sort of federal rehab that they would pay for. But this is the thing. The more that I looked into it, the more that I researched 
I would talk to friends. You're not allowed to talk to your family for 18 months. Now, at that time, in 2017, my dad had just had a major heart surgery. My mom was in the early stages of dementia. Things hadn't progressed as far as they have right now, but the early signs of Alzheimer's was just setting in at that point. Karina, even though I suspected that she was pregnant because her boobs hurt and we weren't using any sort of birth control, I wasn't confirmed that she was pregnant yet, but I was more thinking that I didn't want to go to a place for 18 months when my both my parents were in questionable health. You know, I think that that's a very kind of like valid fucking fear. You know, I don't want to go into some program for 18 months and be blacked out with communication. So right there, when I'd gone to this meeting, right before I went to detox, right before I went down to Orange County, I was essentially asking probation if I could have permission to go down to detox because I needed it that would have been detox that my family paid for may have been there for a week or two gotten off everything physically and then maybe had a shot to have sobriety but not go be at some fucked up lockdown facility for 18 months where they make you like hand weave voodoo dolls of probation officers or whatever weird shit they make you do so I left the office Karina, always my loyal little slut at the time, sat in the car. I think, what happened? And I was like, they're not going to let me go. And she's like, that's stupid. Fuck them. I was like, yeah. Well, what are we going to do? <laughs> Karina's like, well, I'm going to go to detox. I need to get help. Because I'd gotten in her head. She She was very impressionable at that point. So she was pretty much saying that she was going to go to rehab without me. And to be honest, I was so paranoid, codependent, jealous, scared that she'd go to rehab and get dicked down by some Rastafarian dude. That I was willing to go down to this rehab with her, this detox, South Orange County Detox in San Clemente, California. I was willing to risk going to prison to go to rehab with her because I was so scared that she was going to meet somebody else and like fall in love with them. And think about how silly that sounds. I had to risk going to prison to sneakily put myself in a detox facility. Absolutely absurd. So it's important that you guys understand that for this story, that I was not allowed to go down there. Anytime you leave anywhere when you're on federal probation, you have to ask for a travel permit. You have to have a pass to leave the county. And you basically have to write your itinerary. It's ridiculous. You're like, yeah, I'm going to go to this place. Then I'm going to go to this hotel. Then I'm going to do like, sometimes they make you like literally get a GPS and do like a map quest, like turn by turn of where you're going you're like yeah i have to make a left on this street then i have to make a right on this it's just ridiculous shit so i had kind of like made the decision that i was gonna go turn myself in or i was gonna go down to this rehab with her fuck the feds who cares i'm only gonna be there for a week it doesn't matter you know i'm on random drug testing at the time but if i get called in for a random drug test then i can just sign myself out of detox and I can go back to Santa Barbara and I can go test. That was like the, the one thing. And my dad was going to call the color code hotline for me. See if my color came up because that's how it was working at that time. You know, I'd call in and they'd say, today we are testing red, yellow, and orange. And I was red. And then I'd have to go in and I'd have to test. Around that same time, Will De Los Santos, someone's going to be like, I bet he's going to say that he wrote the movie Spun. He wrote the movie Spun. He also produced it. Mickey Rourke was in the movie. Will De Los Santos, we had pretty much done the film deal, but I hadn't assigned the rights yet. So Will was like, well, you know, I called him, talked to him about it. I said, hey, man, I'm going to detox. I'm not allowed to leave the county. I'm not even allowed to go to detox in the first place. 
so I might be going to prison. And he's like, well, you're going to have to sign the rights over to me then. You know, we'd already done the deal where he had adapted into a screenplay, but the rights were still something that I had held on to at that point. And because I was going to rehab, I fucking signed the contract. I should have never done that. He owns wasting talent in perpetuity, meaning he owns it forever. And I just signed a pretty fucked up deal because I was desperate and I, I thought I was, I might be going to prison. Okay, so just so you know all these things. I just signed the rights over to Will. Probation it was like, I knew that at any moment I might have to go back up to Santa Barbara. They called me in for a drug test and they already knew that I wanted to go to detox and I was doing it without their blessing. So now Karina and I had already gone to detox. We get kicked out. My plan is that I'm going to go try to do this little mission for Henry, get 3,500 bucks and somehow $3,500 is going to solve all of my problems. I'll fucking, I'll fucking bribe the probation officers with that kind of money. I'll offer him 50, 60 bucks. Fuck it. I was delusional. We get kicked out of detox. We drive to Trader Joe's and I convince Karina to steal a bottle of wild turkey. Okay. Steal is the bottle of wild turkey. I'm at the front of the store. She runs up. There's this black security guard behind her. She runs up to me and she basically puts me on blast. Says that I put her up to it. We get taken to this back room, getting interrogated. They basically want us to make statements about like why we were stealing. It was some weirdo Trader Joe shit. There's always been kind of like a cult like grocery store. And they said that they didn't know if they're going to press charge or not. That it was going to come down to the supervisor. And then Callan walks in. Ka Probably one of the people that I dislike the most in the entire world at that point of my life. Walks in there and the fate of us going to jail in Orange County lies in this bitch's hands. So Callan sees me. And she's like, hold on, let me plug my phone in so it doesn't die. Then I don't have to be like, part one of two of four of, you know, that shit gets annoying. So Callan sees me and she's like, Ryan? Black security guard's like, you know these people? She's like, oh my God. She's like, that guy? is my boyfriend's drug dealer. I was like, what the fuck? Are you serious? He's a bad person. So they're like, so do you want to press charges? She's like, I think so. Can I have a moment where I can just talk to them? Security guard stayed with her. So it was me, the security guard, Callan and uh, Karina. She's like, are you fucking kidding me? She's like, you're down in Orange County and you're stealing fucking wild turkey from my work? After you sold Jeff heroin? I was like, are you serious right now? I didn't sell Jeff heroin. What the fuck are you talking about? That's like my best friend. I haven't even done heroin for years. What are you talking about? She's like, what are you doing in Orange County? I was like, I'm, I just got out of rehab. This is my, this is my, this is my girlfriend, Karina. Karina's just looking at her. Like, Karina is a very, very, oh my God. Ping pong just flew out of my asshole you see why i didn't want to record earlier because i've just been farting non-stop is a very likable person very lovable i love this girl to fucking death she's my best friend really truly i mean that and we fuck and it's weird i'm like yeah thanks homie it's a bomb ass sex session but she's a fucking bitch if she doesn't if she doesn't know you if she doesn't like you and if she's drunk She's one of the biggest bitches you'll ever meet in your life. She's horrible.
pure, like, she's not the kind of person you want to be on her bad side. Callan's, like, one of the dumbest bitches I've ever met in my life. Trina's like, this is the chick that dated Jeff. Ew. She says that. Ew. Callan looks at her. She's like, what the fuck? So they start getting in this, like, cat standoff thing. And I'm just like, Callan, look. Please. Please listen to me. Just hear me out. And I explain the whole thing. Tell her how I'm on probation and uh, Karina is pregnant, even though we don't know that at that point. And that I am probably going back to prison for many years. My parents are both in poor health. I'm sad, came down, checked myself into rehab, and I basically made my pregnant girlfriend put her up to it. I made myself sound like just the biggest piece of shit in the world. I mean, I was. I'm not. I was pretty much telling the truth about what was going on. Callan's like, do you know that my sister used to do crystal meth? So I don't know why, but out of nowhere, it kind of came to me that the only thing that I could do is be agreeable with this girl because I had never been before. I'd always fought her. The two times that I met her before this, remember the first time I caught her uh, or she was like asking for wine at my parents' house. Second time I catch her smoking pot in my car with Jeff. Both times, bad interactions. Both times I argued with her. This time I just decided to play her game. I was like, I was like, wait. Your sister was addicted to speed? She's like, yes. And it was horrible. She used to have sex with Mexicans. I was like, standing shit like in front of Karina. I'm like, I'm like, damn, Kellen, I didn't know. God, I feel so bad about being mean to you all that time. It was a complete misunderstanding. I had no idea that your sister was a junkie. She was, and honestly, you're really reminding me of her right now. You look like a girl. No, she didn't say that. But she's like, your addiction is really reminding me of that. I was like, Callan, please. You know your sister, right? Your sister's not a bad person, is she? Callan starts crying. She's like, no. I was like, so do you think I'm a bad person? She's like, I don't know. Jeff said you're a drug dealer. I think that you sold him drugs before. I was like, okay. Callan. I did. And I was like, and he still loves you. And she's like, really? I was like, yes. God, he loves you. Callan, you were the love of his life. If you don't press charges, we, we can hang out. We can talk. I can help you get him back. Because she really loves you. Now remember, this chick cheated on Jeff. <sighs> Callan looks at the security guard. She's like, what should we do? He's like, I don't, it's up to you. And she's like, okay. Brian, I really love Jeff. I was like, really? Is that why you cheated on him? No, I didn't say that. I was like, I know you do. To be honest... I always kind of thought you were a little bit above him. Kind of thought that you were too good for him. You know what I'm saying? She's like, I do. You need a detox, right? And I was like, yeah. She's like, why don't you just detox at my place? You can come stay with me and my boyfriend. And when he's not home, we can talk about Jeff and how maybe we can get back together at some point. Karina hates this <laughs> this fucking story. Wait, she's gonna she's gonna be watching this. Um, <coughs> we were just we were like on a hold on one second. I gotta get water. Mm -hmm. 
We were like, we were like on a walk today and Karina, I was telling Karina, she always asked me, she's like, what stories are you doing? And I'm like, and I told her a couple days ago, we were talking and I was telling her that I was doing the Henry story and she's like, oh my God, are you going to tell him about, about the whole Callan thing? We were down in Orange County and I was like, it's like, yeah. And she's like, are you going to tell him everything that happened? I was like, I don't know. I'll censor it to some degree. So she's probably going to be watching this. Basically, this is what ends up happening. Callan decides not to press charges on us for shoplifting. I had no idea that she... I didn't even... I knew she lived in Orange County, but I had no idea that she lived in San Clemente, which was the um, town that the rehab was located. And it makes sense in, like, retrospect or, like, looking back on it now... Because when Jeff lived down in Orange County, he used to hang out with Preston all the time, you know, and they never really got along in high school. So it was, I, it always kind of tripped me out that they had become friends down in Orange County. Now it kind of made sense. Like, you know, the rehab that I went to was in San Clemente. That's where Jeff was living when he met, um, Callan. It's not that big of a place. San Clemente is kind of like a small town. It's kind of like Santa Barbara. I think it's even smaller than that. But anyway, it makes sense that she was working down there at the time. So her plan is that she wants, she's going to allow us to come stay with her and her boyfriend. Because she knows that I need to detox. Now remember, I've lied to Callan at this point. And I said that Karina was pregnant and I said that like, because I was on federal probation, one of the reasons that I was doing detox down in San Clemente was because I just couldn't get off alcohol when I was up in Santa Barbara and Karina was essentially like coming down there to support me. She was living with me at this rehab. This girl didn't know shit about addiction, so she didn't know how it worked. She didn't know that it's like not normal for when you go to rehab for your girlfriend to like come down there with you. So she says that we can come stay with her and basically I can continue to kick at her place because this is what kind of girl Callan is. Callan is the kind of girl that likes to be up in everybody's business under the guise that she wants to help people, but she's really just some sociopathic control freak. And I think that she liked kind of like the vulnerable situation that Karina and I presented ourselves in. So Callan's like, you're going to stay here. I get off work in three hours. I'm going to allow you to stay back here. And then you're going to come home with me. And I live with my boyfriend and you're going to kick at our house and when he's not around, we're going to talk about Jeff. I was like, I look at Karina and Karina's just rolling her eyes. Callum's like, give me your car keys. I was like, fuck. Because of course, in my mind, I was like, just trying to be agreeable, go along with whatever Callum said so that we could just get in the fucking car and leave, not get charges pressed against us. So we end up not getting charges pressed against us. I had to give Callan the fucking keys to my car. And after, afterwards, after she gets off her shift or whatever, like, in, Karina and I stayed in the back room the entire time. We were staying back there with the security guard, with this black dude. I forget what his name was, but he was actually pretty cool. We were, like, just talking the whole time. I was telling, I told him the Mike Virgin story. Um, and the guy ended up, like, liking me like by the end we like had a secret handshake and shit i was like come on give me five man you like gave me some credit right. so callan gets off work she comes back into the uh into the back office and she's like okay guys i'm done security guard just had stayed with us the whole time i swear i know it sounds fucking odd i swear this is how it actually went down so we end up leaving this trader joe's and I asked, I'm like, well, can I grab my car? And she's like, no. She's like, I know how my sister was when she used to do crystal methamphetamine. 
And anytime she had access to a car, I'd fucking go in the garage and she'd be sucking some dude's cock. I was like, I swear to God, I won't do that. She's like, I can't trust you. You're on drugs. Leave your car in the parking lot. It'll be fine. I am the supervisor of Trader Joe's. They know me. I was like, okay, they may know you, but they're not going to know my car. I'm not trying to get my car towed, Callan. She's like, look, I have a deal with the security guard where if at any moment you go against what I want you to do, I can get you arrested for shoplifting and you're on federal probation. You're going to go right back to jail. Okay. I was like, whatever. So we end up getting in her car. She has like some Jetta or whatever. And she drives us to her condo. She lived in this like, I don't know, like townhouse style condos. Like in one of those like complexes where all these townhouses look the same. As we're driving, she's bumping Alan Alanis Morissette, and she's singing along to it. Karina and I are both in the backseat of the car, too. It's the weirdest shit. It's like we're taking an Uber or something, and we have this psychotic sociopath singing along to Alanis Morissette. We don't say one word the entire drive. We end up getting to her, her townhouse, and she's like, you guys wait. I'm going to go in and I'm going to talk to my boyfriend and tell him that drug addicts are coming to stay with us. And I was like, cool. So she leaves. We're in the parking lot. I'm like, come on, let's go. Let's fucking run for it. Crane's like, well, what are we going to do about your car? What do you mean? How are we even going to get back to Santa Barbara? I don't have my car keys anymore. Callan had taken them from me. I was like, dude, I was like, I don't even want to go into that condo. I feel like she's going to, like, hold us fucking hostage. Karina's like, I don't know what other choice we have. Just You're the one that got us in this stupid fucking situation. I told you I don't want to steal the fucking wild turkey. Whatever. End up sitting in the back of this car. Because she had a point. There was, like, nothing we could really do to get back. Probably, like... 45 minutes goes by like a long time like a long period goes by Callan comes back to the car she's like guys Jordan said you guys can stay with us <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun I'm gonna get you sober and then you're gonna get Jeff back for me I'm just looking at this chipmunk looking bitch and I'm just like god I hate you so much probably like the worst person in the world that this guy I could not believe I was in this situation. I'd never met her boyfriend, right? Get out of the car, go to this condo. It's like super, super, super immaculate place. Right as we walk in, Callan's like, okay, take your shoes off. And Karina's like, are you just going to talk to us like that the entire time? And she's like, whoa, you're not talking to me like that in my own fucking house. And I squeeze Karina as hard as I can on the waist just to shut her up. Take our shoes off. I'm like, whatever. Callan's like, let me show you where your room is. So then I see her boyfriend. He's like, this guy, Jordan. Biggest simp I've ever met in my life. He's wearing like a Michael Jordan Bulls jersey. And he's like, where, it's like in a jersey and boxers. He's like, hey, I'm Callan's boyfriend, Jordan. Pretty much anything goes. But I'm just going to say one thing, that we're gamers. And that we intend to game when you guys are here. If that's cool. It's the weirdest shit ever. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, that's cool, man. I'm trying to be as agreeable with them as possible. Even though Karina and her got in this little like blip right when we got there. So they... Take us up to this room, this like guest room. I swear to God, it's like a prison cell. There's like, there's no deck, there's no decor. There's like a window, there's like a little like toy sailboat, like in the window. So it looks so sad. It looks like it's just been abandoned at sea. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I tell Callan, I'm like, now what? And she's like, you're going to dry out for at least a week. And then I want you to go to 30 meetings in 30 days. 
that's how you get sober forever. All right. She's leaving the room and I go to close the door. And I'm like thinking in my mind, I'm like, well, at least I can fuck Karina. Go to close the door and Colin's like, no way. It's like, no way what? And she's like, there's no way you're closing the door. She's like, I know what you guys are going to do. You guys are going to fuck and it's gross. You can't do that here. You're here to get well. Not to have sex. It's fucking gross. You should be grossed out right now because I am. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know. It's like, at this point, I'm like thinking in my mind, I'm like, I just need to call my dad. Have my dad come swoop me up. Like, this is ridiculous. You know, at any point now, probation can call. I'm not even in contact with my dad. Like, I don't even know. I, I have no idea what's happening. So I'm like trying to figure out a way to get in contact with him. There's no TV in this room. There's no nothing. So Karina and I are just sitting on this bed. Karina's whispering to me. She's like, this is seriously like the most fucked up situation you've ever put me in. These people are weird. Did you see that guy, Jordan? He was in a jersey and boxers. What the fuck? I'm like, I don't know. And he comes in and he's like, like he eventually he comes into the room. I don't know. A few minutes later. And he's like, he's like, hey, man. Sorry about Callan. I know she's being weird. You game, right? Like, I wasn't joking. Like, that's all we do at this house. And you pretty much have to game if you're going to be here. Now, I have nothing against video games, right? But I don't know much about them. And I told him that. I was like, hey, like, the last video game I had was, like, Nintendo 64. I had, like, Mario Kart. He looks offended by this. He's like... Well, come on, come into the living room. I'll give you a headset and you can play with me. I forget what the game was, but it was like, you know, I don't know shit about video games, but it was like some game where uh, kind of looked like Halo or like, you know, it was like one of those like first person shooter games. Gives me a headset. Of course, he has like this like in intricate gaming, like, you know, probably spent like 10 grand on his gaming entertainment system. He's wearing like this outfit that looks like he's in like the movie Tron. It's like all light up and shit. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Put the headset on and I can hear people talking. I, I don't know much about video games, but I guess it was like connected to like a network where you could like talk to other people. I have the controller. Karina's up in the room, by the way. It's just me and this guy in the living room. I don't even know where Callan is. I'm sitting there, like, trying to play the game, but I don't really know how to play it. Plus, I'm, like, coming off of alcohol and drugs and shit. I just feel like shit. He's like, all right, man. Look, when I go through this door, meet me at, like, 0400. 3.6 counterclockwise, if you know what I'm saying. Come on, dog, let's go. I hear some, like, seven-year-old from, like, Kentucky, like, talking shit on the headset to him. He's like, shut up, you little bitch. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Weird shit is this? Now, I'm trying as hard as I can, but I'm just, like, pressing random buttons, and I keep fucking up. And he's just looking at me, and he's like, he's like, come on, man. He's like, you could at least, you could at least try. He's like, you're going to fuck up my entire stats right now. I was like, man, I told you, I don't really play video games. I've never played video games. I don't know what to tell you. He's like, that's not what Callan said. Callan said that you were going to come over and you were going to fucking play with me. And we we're going to give you a place to stay so that you could get sober. But you have to play games with me. I was like, Jesus Christ. I sit there and I'm just like fumbling like the whole fucking time, right? Ugh. Eventually, I make, like, enough mistakes where he just, like, puts the game on pause and he just kind of, like, takes his headset off. He's like, he's like, take it off. Take it off. 
He's like, I'm not going to let you stay here anymore if you keep fucking with me like this. He's like, Callan said she's known you for years. She said that you gamed. And from your actions, it looks like you've never gamed a fucking day in your life, bro. Just go back to your room. Come on, dog. I was like, dog? I'm your dog now? Fucking weirdo. Whatever. I walk back up to the room. Karina's passed out by this point. She's just passed out on the bed. And I like climb up and I like kind of like nestle up next to her. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to try to get some sleep too. Like this is, I felt like I was in some sort of nightmare. Like maybe I'll go to sleep and I'll wake up and the shit will be done. Lay next to her. I don't fall asleep, but I'm kind of like resting, you know, like with my eyes closed. Callan walks in the room and she's like, hey. I just talked to Jordan and he said that you were making fun of him for being a gamer. I don't think that it's working out for you guys to stay here. I was like, you know, Callan, Karina wakes up to this, right? Karina like kind of is like all drowsy. She wakes up. I'm like, you know, I think you may be right. I was like, I really appreciate the sentiment. I appreciate you trying to help us out. But yeah, I don't know how to game. It seems like your boyfriend is obsessed with that. And I don't know. I think this whole situation is kind of weird. Like if you could just take me back to my car, I would be eternally grateful. And she's like, I thought we were going to talk about Jeff. She comes and closes the door and she's like, tell me all about him. What's he doing? Does he talk about me? Does he know me? I'm getting to the point with her where, like, I don't even want to, like, bullshit her anymore. You know? Like, I don't... I'm, like, sick of this game. I'm like, Callan, he doesn't think about you at all. He's already moved on. He's got a hot little piece of ass now named Ashley. She's got a heart-shaped ass. She's got huge tits. I love her. Fuck. She wasn't taken. I'd date her. Karina's like, hey. I'm like, shh. I'm, like, trying to be all passive-aggressive by talking shit to Callan. Callan's like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't need your fucking stupid ass attitude. It's like I should have known from all of our other interactions that you're just a scumbag drug dealer and you sold Jeff drugs and I plan on letting the authorities know about it. It's like, whatever. Can you just take us to our car? She's like, come on, let's go. Leave the front. We leave. So this room's like at the top of this flight of stairs or whatever we end up going down the flight of stairs we put up we put our shoes on and we go outside we get back in her car she's not saying anything to us she's just like mm, probably like humming alanis more so whatever the fuck she's doing karina i have to say for being like as obnoxious of a drunk bitch as she usually is she's not saying anything she's just like silent I think she's in shock that we've been, like, held captive by this, like, weirdo couple. You know, that's not really what happened. I mean, we just got there, and basically her boyfriend was some dork, and he got mad because I didn't know how to play video games. It's pretty much what it was. And then she tried to ask me about Jeff, and I lied and said that he's with some hot girl now, which he wasn't. So now we're in the car. We're sitting in the back seat again. She's driving. And she's got a GPS on, right? It didn't strike me as odd. You know, I should have, like, really put more thought into it about, like, why she had a GPS on because she was just taking us back to my car at the Trader Joe's parking lot. But it's, like... Make a left, you know, make a right, whatever. It's saying the GPS stuff. And I didn't think of it at first, you know. We're just kind of all... We're, this time she's not listening to music. She's just listening to the GPS. It didn't really occur to me until about halfway into the ride. And then I looked at her and I said, Callan, where are you taking us? And she's like, duh, I'm taking you to the police station. She's like, I'm fucking pressing charges on you. You guys are both pieces of shit. And we will get into what Callan did and how we got out of the situation. Don't forget, 
all the things that I told you about being on federal probation. I wasn't allowed to be down there in the first place. And now Callan's taking us to police station. And we will get into this in the next installment of the Henry series. Palabra.